Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. I thought we'd go over a few issues raised by various comments I've received. Today, if God is so good, why is there so much suffering? We've already done episodes on why God allows evil, and even how we can use the existence of evil to prove the existence of God. But evil and suffering are not necessarily the same thing. Why is suffering in particular allowed by God? The first thing that I think it's important to point out about this issue is that no one could ever answer this question exhaustively, not even with an entire lifetime to work. This is because there are just so many different types of suffering to cover, and for each one of those types, billions upon billions of specific examples of individual occurrences of suffering. It's possible, even likely, that each individual instance of suffering has its own reason to exist, in which case making any attempt to track them all down would be a fool's errand. It's just too much data to handle, even if we could find it all. For this reason, I don't think it's really so important to learn all of the reasons why God allows suffering. Instead, we can make do with learning just a few general reasons why suffering may be allowed by God. Let's start with the conclusions that we've already drawn about why God allows evil. Since God is a God of love, we need to love him back, so we must have free will in order to choose to love God. From free will comes the possibility of abusing that free will and choosing not to love God, therefore evil must exist, or none of us can be saved. Of course, when people choose to avoid loving God, they drive further away from him, and since God is the source of all goodness, including all joy, driving further away from God also involves driving further away from joy, hence suffering. So suffering could exist without God voluntarily causing it. However, I think we also have good reasons to suspect that suffering might be needed in the work of salvation. Off the top of my head, I can think of three examples of how suffering might help the salvation of souls. Example 1. Suffering sometimes builds character. When a person experiences horrible suffering in, for instance, an accident, a natural disaster, or a war, they can sometimes learn from that experience and become a stronger person, less likely to waste time on foolishness, and more likely to show concern for the well-being of others who are also experiencing suffering. In the same way, suffering under injustices can often help us to realize just how wrong it is to commit them against others. It can help to make us better people, more considerate and wiser, if we use that suffering and learn from it, instead of merely angsting over it. Example 2 guidance. Sometimes suffering arises purely as a result of an action that a person commits. For instance, putting a fork in the electrical outlet will often result in suffering. This can teach us something important, namely, don't put a fork in the electrical outlet. Even the suffering of others can sometimes guide our actions, such as hearing about a car crash. That might encourage us to be more careful on the road, and just as suffering can help to guide us in avoiding earthly harm, it can also help to guide us in avoiding eternal harm. When people suffer for committing serious sins, this isn't God vindictively wanting to hurt his enemies. God is trying to teach them the path that they must take for their own good, and which paths they must definitely not take. Example 3. Saving Suffering specifically the suffering of Jesus on the cross. The Bible is pretty clear that there is a price that must be paid when evil is done, and that Jesus paid that price through his suffering and death on the cross. In many ways, this is the most important purpose of suffering. So, there are plenty of good reasons to think that God would allow suffering for the sake of a greater good, and therefore the existence of suffering does nothing to challenge the goodness of God. Next, how can we know that science and logic are separate? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.